Hello everyone, this is Frank Demore again, and today is September the 4th, connecting the dots between the current events and Bible prophecy. And since there's a lot of activity going on in the Middle East, and the Lord shows us the prophecies about the Middle East, we need to be paying attention to what's going on. For those of you who may not know what's going on, this is the place to get that information, to connect the dots between the current events and Bible prophecy. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of prophecy sites that you can go to, but most of them will just give you the link and they're never going to connect the dots for you or explain what the importance of the article is. And at least at my site, uh, for the most part, you're going to either get a video or I try to give an explanation for you to, so that you can understand what the link is all about. And so let us go down and take a look at Psalm 83 and Ezekiel chapter 38. So you're going to see how I'm going to connect the dots here. And again, for those people who have been with me for any amount of time, bear with me. For the new people, they need to understand what Psalm's about and what the Ezekiel War is about. So, very briefly, Psalm 83 is a war that tells us that all of these nations listed from 1 to 10 are going to attack Israel, thinking that they're going to wipe Israel out. If you keep in mind, the left-hand side are the Old Testament names, for example, Phoenicia. All right, That's the modern-day modern, modern day Palestinians who live in the Gaza Strip. They're also known as the Hamas and the Hezbollah. These are the PLO. And you'll see Assyria, which is in the Old Testament, but today they're the Syrians, all right? Very simple. And the reason why I'm pointing out Phoenicia and Assyrians or the Palestinians and Assyrians is because they are in the mix right now in the heated, intense, intense uh, fighting going on in the Middle East, in Syria. So you have to understand what these nations are all about. And the Lord tells us in verse 4 the reason why there is a confederacy that comes together against Israel. It says, They have said, Come and let them co cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So th we know that God is telling us that this army of confederate nations, all of these, are going to try to destroy Israel. We know that. Take a look at verse 5. It says, <clears throat> it shows us that there is a confederate against thee. In other words, a confederate against Israel. Now, that is the first war that's going to take place. And we see the makings of that war. The second war of which, see all of these nations, they don't participate in the next war. It's because they were defeated in the Psalm 83 war. And a whole new list of people will be attacking in the second war of which Russia is going to be a major player. They are the ones that are going to lead the attack on against Israel. Have Islamic allies that will be coming from Libya and coming from, you'll see it here from the right where this arrow, this is Persia, modern day Iran. Then you have Turkey and Gomari and all of these other nations that are listed in Ezekiel chapter 38. But for the purpose of this video, I wanted to show you that Russia, Syria, Iran, and the Palestinians, and the Israelis, right now in the Middle East, we see things that are coming ahead. Now, for years I've been warning what is what I believe is going to happen based on the scriptures. And I'm going to show you that there was a report today, it almost says the exact same things that I've been warning you. When I saw this, I thought, geez, I could have wrote this article. At least if you go Google me, uh, Frank DeMora, and you put down... Uh, what's going to happen as far as attacking Israel, you would see all my warnings, many of them. Now, when is this war going to take place, the first war? For those of you who may not know, we see when it's going to take place. It's going to take place when, you'll see it here, when they shall say peace and safety. Now, the world has seen the peace process spinning around and around and around. It's been spinning around ever since 1979. And all we get from it is conflict, one after another, and they get worse and worse over the years. And this is what the Lord Jesus told us was going to happen in the future. And we're here in the future, and we're seeing his words come to pass. 
Now, we are already witnessing the call for peace and safety, and the part that is coming up is the sudden destruction, the war. Against who? It's going to be coming up against Israel. And notice, he says, as travail upon a woman with child. So just like the birth pangs that Jesus talked about in Mark 13, 8, which I mentioned a million times by now, both of these go hand in hand. The Middle East is going to be, if you, if you want to perceive it as a, uh, as a stick of dynamite with the fuse lit and it's about ready to explode. That's what we're seeing in the Middle East right now where all of the nations are getting ready uh, to come down against Israel at a time where they're calling peace and safety. Now, I told you many, many times that you're going to hear and you're going to see people, leaders from different countries, trying to establish some peace uh, in Israel with the Arabs, and it's not going to happen, at least not until the Antichrist comes and confirms a covenant for seven years, but that covenant is going to be broken in exactly three and a half years. But the first part from Psalm 83, when that war happens, the, the destruction, then we know that <clears throat> this is when this war breaks out, when they're calling for peace and safety. I've been telling you to look, that the peace process will remain stalled. It's been stalled for almost four years, and now they're trying to jumpstart it. I told you what was going to happen. So let me bring you to an article to show you, was I right or was I wrong? Now this article was taken uh, September the 4th. This is today's article. And the senior PA official, peace talks with Israel are going nowhere. It doesn't come as a surprise to me, and anybody that's been following my website should know what was going to happen and shouldn't surprise you as well. It says, peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians are proving pointless and will not bear fruit without much greater pressure from Washington, a top aide to the Palestinian Muhammad Abbas, said on Wednesday. Now, in the most damning Palestinian assessment to date, Yasser Abed Rebu said that the negotiations, which kicked off in late July after three-year hiatus, has made no progress. And what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you over and over again, if you think that the Middle East is going to have a peace agreement signed before the Antichrist comes, You've, you're barking up the wrong tree because that's not what the Lord shows us. He shows us that there is going to be the call for peace and then sudden destruction. And that sudden destruction, no doubt, leads the Psalm 83 war. Right, now moving on, now I'm going to show you a little bit about the Ezekiel war because you're going to see how all of these nations... Uh, that were written down in the Ezekiel War, how they're merging together, getting ready to fulfill prophecy. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 38, this is a part of the, uh, taken from my book. And what I did is in Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 13, I made it visual for you so you could see who the players are during this war. All right, now keep in mind that these people that you're going to see here, the flags, all they do when the attack comes by Russia and the Islamic nations, millions of the Islamic nations coming down thinking that they're going to destroy Israel, these nations with the flags that I'm showing you here, all they do is give a formal protest. They do not help Israel. We know that Israel is on their own. And they think, no doubt, that they're going to be destroyed. But God steps in and he wipes out five-sixths of the army. Now take a look at Ezekiel 38:13. You'll see the connection here, so stay with me. It says, tell us, or Ezekiel chapter 38, 13 tells us that you'll see the flag, Great Britain, which is Tarshish in the Old Testament, is known as the lion, the symbology. But we know that Tarshish is known as the lion. Now, the United States, Canada, and Australia, which are the young lions, a break off from the main lion. Then you have Tarshish, now, all of these nations are in the area of Tarshish, or with Tarshish, in the area of who? Saudi Arabia, which is known in the Old Testament as Sheba and Dedan at the time the attack breaks out against, uh, against Israel. So what we know is, for the most part, 
all of these nations will be together in the same accord. They don't do anything. They just give a formal protest, right? So you're going to see how it comes into effect now. Keep in mind, this happens when this allegiance happens and they give the formal protest. They're giving a formal protest to who? The attacking army. Who's leading that army? It's the Russians. Now keep in mind, based on what we know of current events happening in Syria and Iran right now, which I'm going to pull together for you, we know that time is drawing to a close and these prophecies will be fulfilled soon. What we know is Russia has already warned in the past, for example, on October the 26, 2007, when you read that Asia Times article, we read the article and we understand the threat by Russia, who said that if you attack Iran, it's the same thing as attacking their land or attacking Russia. Look at this. The barely reported highlight of the Russian president, Vladimir Putin's visit to Tehran for the Caspian Sea summit last week was a key face-to-face -face meeting with the supreme leader, Hayatollah Ali Khamenei. And the high-level diplomatic source in the Tehran tells the Asian Times Online that essentially Putin and the Supreme Leader have agreed on a plan to nullify the George W. Bush administration's relentless drive towards launching a preemptive attack, perhaps a tactical nuclear. So they, in 2007, Russia was warning about this, but look at this. Now, strike against Iran, an American attack on Iran will be viewed by Moscow as an attack on Russia. So now what we have in 2013, we have talked that the United States is going to go in and hit bomb with missiles the ally of Russia, Syria. All right? Keep this in mind because this is where it all comes together. We've already got a warning in 2007 from the Russians that they will use nuclear uh, armament against their, uh, the people that are attacking their allies. Now, in 2012, this same kind of a threat by the Russians was again seen in the news. Let me go over to that article. Now, this was taken in February of 2012, the former Russian general, Russia's defending the entire world from fascism is ready to use military power to defend Iran and Syria. So here we go back a year ago, a little over a year ago, Russia was telling the world, hands off of our allies, hands off of Iran, hands off of Syria. Let's go down here. The former member of the Russian Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Colonel General Leonid is shows appeared on the Russian T Today TV to boldly announce that Russia is defending the entire world from fascism waged, of course, by the United States, or the U.S. here, as it says, and Israel. And keep in mind, Ezekiel 38, Russia comes against Israel. So don't be surprised when they're hooked together here in the same article. And that his country is ready to use military force to defend Iran and Syria from its aggressors. He added that an attack on Syria or Iran would be an indirect attack on Russia. Now are you getting the picture? What you're seeing set up in the current news now is exactly what the Russians said that they were going to do. So we're hearing the wars and the rumors of wars which could set off a regional war, a bigger one, bigger one that most people realize. So look at down, move down here. It says in an interview, it says, Dr. Uh, Leonard, do you think that these preparations and the very large maneuvers which will soon be conducted by Russia are meant as a preparation of war or rather a military strike against Iran? And then you have the Russians answer. These maneuvers and trainings will demonstrate Russia's readiness and use of military power to defend its natural, national interest and to bolster political position. 
The maneuvers show that Russia does not want any military operations to be waged against Iran or Syria. I assume that the people in the West and Israel who designed the schemes for a large geopolitical operation in the greater Middle East region draw a direct connection between the situation in Syria and in Iran. Indeed, these two countries are allies and both are considered guaranteed partners of Russia. The only question, therefore, is who they will try to destroy first as a stable country, Syria or Iran. So the general back then, he understood, at least he could see the future, that the United States would try to take out either Iran or Syria. And that's exactly where Barack Obama is headed for today. All right, so now that you've got an idea, at least a little glimpse of the players in the Ezekiel War, the players in the Psalm 83 War, like the Palestinians and the Syrians, all right, the Russians and Iran, all of these people are involved, intermingled, and they will be bringing about prophecy. Now, let me show you an article that when I read this, as I said before, when I saw this article and I read it, I said, holy mackerel. This looks like something that I have not only warned dozens and dozens of times, but it looks like an article that I wrote. And you can go back as far as 2010. And most of the things that you're going to say in this article, I've already said and warned to you. Now, those people who have been following the, the progress of my website in the postings, you would understand how close we really are to seeing major wars. Take a look at this. I'm going to go to the article. What attack on Syria will mean? All right. So let's, I'm going to stop as I read and I'm going to connect the dots. And I'm sure that you're going to find this pretty interesting. If Barack Obama leads America into war with Syria, there's something everyone needs to know about this mission that hardly anyone is articulating. This war will not just be with Syrian regime clinging tenderously to power, it will be a proxy war against Iran. And this is what I've been warning about. If Iran is looking, keep in mind I've written, I've shown you articles about Iran supporting these nations that are listed in the Psalm 83 war. They've been supporting the Palestinians the Hezbollah, the Hamas. They've been supporting the Hezbollah in Lebanon, which is also one of the nations listed in the Psalm 83 war. Supporting, if you will, Syria. All of these are uh, allied nations or proxy nations of Iran. All right, so let's go on. If it were not for the support from Iran, Bashar al-Assad would probably be out of power already. It would not even be an exaggeration to suggest Syria has become a client state of Iran, which I've mentioned many times, as, as has neighbor Lebanon. So are you getting the picture? Especially for those who may have just discovered my website and knew nothing about Bible prophecy. And you're, you're seeing now that these very same nations, the Christ and the Old Testament that our Father God had warned, they're coming into play right now. Now here we go. Let me go back. It says, think of Hezbollah as Iran's terrorist foreign legion. It may be present the, or represent the most significant military power in Syria and Lebanon. Last week, Iranian officials said that if the U.S. launches missile attacks on Assad's forces, meaning their own, because they have trainers, they have weapons in those areas, Tehran would respond with missile attacks of its own, now get this, on Israel. This is exactly what I said, going as far back as 2007. Now, this may be a bluff, but it may not be. And I don't think that comes as a surprise to the U.S. war strategists, not at all. Let me explain the real war behind the war. You don't think Obama is losing sleep over the relative handful of victims of a chemical weapons attack in Syria, do you? 
There are far more children aborted through equally gruesome means every single day in America than were killed in the, by the chemical weapons in Syria. And despite assertions and by the administration officials, there is no compelling evidence the attacks were conducted by the Syrian regime. I think what Obama is doing in Syria is part of a devious, one might even say diabolical, master plan for dealing with Iran and its nuclear weapons program. Iran is likely to react very strongly to any missile attack on Syria, which it now considers virtually its own sovereign territory. So you can see how the second war will come into play when the first war is finished. When Iran's proxy nations are destroyed by Israel, it's going to tick Iran off. It's going to tick the Russians off, whose allies are Syria and predominantly all those other Muslim nations in that area that are listed in the Psalm 83, it's going to tick them off and then the second attack will happen. Now moving down, when missiles start raining on Israel, what do you suppose the Jewish state's reaction will be? Now if you Google my site, you'll see I've told you many times what they're going to do. When Israel sees that they're being bombarded, hit by missiles, they are going to launch their IDF and they're going to send their jets in and they're going to take out anybody that's sending these missiles on them. And when that happens, I believe that the scenario will happen, that Iran will see it, the Russians will see it, the whole world will see it. When Israel gets involved in this conflict, that's when everything changes and that's when the Psalm 83 war will take place. One thing that I've watched this weekend, I've watched these different political shows and everyone was talking about the consequences of the United States not going in to Syria. Now one thing no one mentioned, I didn't see one of these programs, CBS, NBC, 60, any of them, None of them mention what I'm about to tell you right now. The scenario that I'm going to lay out for you right now wasn't even in anybody's lips, any of the news agencies. If you want to see how Syria will be taken care of, and the United States nor anyone else has to be involved to take care of that problem, all you have to do is just sit back Watch what goes on in Syria, and when missiles start to fall in, this, in the Israeli territory, and they would no doubt do it on purpose because they've been doing it on purpose for years. They've been launching rockets and mortars from the Palestinian areas in southern Lebanon into Israel. And we, when we saw those attacks, I told you, they would respond immediately, which the Israelis did. Now, if you just let everything go the way it's going right now and they started to shell Israel and any chemical weapon whatsoever all it takes is one of those canisters to land anywhere near the Israeli border it's all over with people because Israel is going to launch their attack and take out Damascus take out Bashar al-Assad and you're going to see Isaiah 17, 1, Jeremiah 49, verses 24 through 27 fulfilled. Everything could happen at the same time. You could see Ezekiel uh, then come into play. There's going to be a little bit of time between to, uh, for that attack, but it's all leading to the Psalm 83 war. So when the missile starts raining on Israel, what do you suppose the Jewish state Reaction will be, look what he says, Israel is not going to sit this war out as it did in the Persian Gulf War. When Saddam Hussein fired every Scud missile he had at Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and Israel, Israel is going to fire back. It may even be the provocation Israel needs to attack, guess who, attack Iran's nuclear facilities with Tactic U.S. approval. So, again, tactic U.S. approval. See, the United States doesn't want to get involved in those kind of wars. The general public now is showing 
a protest against Barack Obama even wanting to go into Syria, let alone going into Syria and Iran. But we know from the scriptures that Israel is alone facing Iran. Israel is alone facing Russia. So what we're seeing coming down the pipeline is exactly what the Lord said, keep your eyes on, watch, I'm telling you what's happening before it happens. Now, don't get me wrong, I support Israel's right to defend itself 100%, but Americans need to understand what kind of war Obama is leading us into. One that probably cannot contain or cannot be contained to Syria. And I've said this over and over again because it's going to lead to a regional war. Syria uh, has stated, and I've, I've shown you this at my website, that if they are attacked, he was going to attack Israel. And that would launch the, the Psalm 83 war. And I suspect the principal motivation for Obama regime of its own fealty not to Israel, of course, but to Saudi Arabia, which wants Iran put in its place. Now, in Ezekiel 38, I showed you that Sheba in Dedan is Saudi Arabia. Sheba in Dedan, or Saudi Arabia, is hooked with who? The United States. And so, do you find it kind of coincidence, maybe? It's not a coincidence at all that the Americans and the Saudi Arabians and Great Britain, Canada, and the rest of these countries that are named in the Psalm or in the Ezekiel War are all together. And so this is why you're seeing the Saudis hooked up against who? Against Iran. Now, let me go back here again, just to, to highlight what I'm showing you. Saudi Arabia, they're with the United States and the rest of their allies, Great Britain and so forth. They're all hooked together. And so you can see by the article that I was just showing you that it is definitely coming down the pikeway. We see that the Russians are ready. And if, are they going to keep their word? Would, would, get this, would the Russian generals, along, of course, with the orders of Putin, really strike out at another nation using nuclear weapons? <laughs> I think that it's very, very possible. Very possible. And this could be one of the reasons why America is not mentioned anywhere else in the scriptures other than what I can see from Ezekiel chapter 38. I believe it's either the United States will be taken out economically because they go bankrupt and they're, they can't uh, stand as a military might like they used to. We're already seeing that. Or they'll be taken out by some other device like, who knows, maybe a nuclear only God can tell us for sure, but what we do know is the wars are coming. The wars that the Lord talked about, those wars are right in front of us. And we can see this by the failing peace process. We see this by what's going on in Syria and the use of chemical weapons. It's more intense than it ever has been. Now, Jesus, in closing, talked about wars and rumors of wars. We've seen plenty of evidence about the rumors of wars, and get ready, because not only is the conflict raging in Egypt to fulfill Isaiah chapter 19, not only is, are we seeing the, the prophecies being fulfilled against nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom with the Syrians, but we're seeing all of these prophecies taking place at the same time. And this tells us that yes, we're in the midst, spinning around, listening to the call for peace and safety. Next on the list is the sudden destruction. All I can say at this point is watch this, is read Psalm 83 for yourself and familiarize yourself with it because uh, we see it happening. The war is coming. Get ready for it. Just like I've been telling you to watch for all these powerful earthquakes to come and they're coming. All of these are the signs that Christ said, keep on the watch. And if you're not keeping on the watch, obviously you're probably not walking with the Lord. Very, very bad position to be taken. God bless.